welcome, welcome, John. How are you? Where are you joining us from? Uh, thank you for having me. I'm joining you from Queens, New York. <gasps> nice. Is it chilly over there now? Has the fall weather already started? Uh, well, it's not as cold as today, but it's still kind of got that gloom going on with the rain and everything. So, <laughs> Well, I'm so glad that you're joining me today and that you get to share a little bit more about your book and your author illustrator life. Um, your style is so unique. I feel like I could spot your illustrator style right away when I go into a store, any bookstore. And I really want to dive deep into your 2022 book that just came out, which is Growing an Artist. Have it right here with me. Let's turn it the right way. <laughs> Going an artist came out this year. This is a title that I'm super excited about because it kind of hits close to home. My dad is also in the landscaping business. So I was like, yes, representation. <laughs> That's so cool. <laughs> yeah. So I'm so glad this title exists. And so I want to know a little bit about when did you first start drafting this manuscript? And were there <clears throat> any scenes that you just had to cut out during revision? Uh, oh, I started back in, I think, May of 2019 uh, to actually write it down. Uh, the idea for the book had been around for a while, um, and then my agent prompted me to start working on it, <laughs> basically. Get busy, guy. So uh, that's what I started doing. So about May of 2019, and I yes, and I wrote way more than I probably needed for the book. There were definitely scenes where that didn't make the cut, I guess, or just kind of repetitive. Uh, I think there was a scene where uh, we we kind of drive up to the the donut shop and get a little couple of bear claws or maple bars or whatever coffee or something like that, and something like that, which was you know a nice memory, you know, because most because again the book is is based off of when I was young and growing up working with my father, and so uh, just about everything in the book is is based on a true story for my life. So yeah, <laughs> and it's it's so well done. I mean, I love the fact when like for you you're an author illustrator you get to add those tiny little details in especially since it relates back to your personal life and one important thing that I really like is that the book is available in English and Spanish so I'm so happy when there's more Spanish titles coming out so there is a Spanish version of this book that's out already and how important was it for you to have the book available in both languages? Well, um, right away, I think they decided, the publisher decided, Simon Schuster, that they would do both English and Spanish, which was great, you know, because uh, the book talks about sort of the Latino community. Um, you know, I think it touches a lot uh, within that community and and what we do and what we work uh, on. So I'm really happy that that's just going to reach uh, a wider audience and uh, um, the audience is very close to my heart. I love that. Yes. And that's so important because, um, you know, there's a lot of English books. I feel like each time that I step into a public library, the Spanish section is like this small. So I'm so happy that your book is contributing to those shelves and hopefully we get more and more Spanish works along the way. Um, I know you mentioned earlier that this book touches on your personal life. Um, so let's dive deep into that. Um, this book has amazing talent along the way and it draws experiences from your own life. Tell us a little bit about your dad's business and maybe his reaction to this story. Um, well, I mean, my dad was a landscape contractor for many, many, many years and um, so he basically, it was like a freelance uh, sort of job where, you know, he was his own boss and he would get hired and contracted to do um, landscape work at different homes. And uh, again, I, I, I sort of mentioned this in the back of the book. I worked for my father for about 12 years uh, working on these projects and working on his landscape designs as well, and uh, which is a big part of, part of the story. So I, that kind of had to do with... Um, his job and it really influenced me because I used a lot of the lessons learned working for him, the hard work, uh, the loving about, you know, learning about nature, but also his uh, aesthetic design, I, I, you know, for design, you know, because when he would talk about landscape, he, he wouldn't say, oh, this just goes here, this just goes here. I mean, he really, you know, and I'm sure your father probably sees it the same, how you design the flow of the garden and how the, the you know, where the plants and the layout will be. And, and there's a whole, 
you know, kind of a little hierarchy as far as like where you put the, the taller bushes and, and then the front bushes. It, there's a whole method to it. And it's it was really interesting, but it, it plays into like designing and in, in, in a very artistic way. And I think that's so interesting. And I and again, as a young artist, I, I think I just really gravitated towards that. So and um, my father did get to see the work when I was working on the book. Um, um, but unfortunately he passed away, uh, just before it was published, but he did, uh, see, see the book, um, as it was coming along and, and I read to him, um, you know, the, the parts, the chapters, you know, the, not chapters, but the pages as a, as I was working on them. So he was very, very happy. I think about that. I'm glad he was able to at least see the start of a project because this project it's out, it's out in the world now such a beautiful book and I love the title growing an artist because like you mentioned in the landscaping business and field there's a lot that goes behind the scenes it's not just oh let's go plant this and that yeah. like um I've listened to my dad before say the same thing it's like there's an art to it you know there's a certain absolutely structure to it and you highlighted that in this book not only just um the young boy in the story kind of like mapping everything out and it also kind of goes in with your um first cover pages um so yeah I love that you included this and it the title matched perfectly I was like there could not be a better title for this book to describe the art um of a job field like this and I'm so glad that you highlighted this job field because I can't think of a book off the top of my mind that talks about this and every job is important and I just kind of felt like even from a like a daughter's perspective my dad was like I feel like my dad is being seen you know it was so great I love I love that this book is out uh, well I'm so I'm so happy about that and again and it, and it kind of shines a light on on also you know we talked a lot during the pandemic about essential workers you know and but in just in general in life you know there are workers kind of behind the scenes that we don't always acknowledge that uh that make the world beautiful, that make the world interesting. And, you know, it's uh, important. It, it was important to me. I, I know there's a lot of books also about, as you, you know, uh, gardening, but as you mentioned, you know, not so much about landscapers or, or contractors or even about small business uh, families with small businesses. You know, it touches on so many different levels that I think is so interesting. Um, you know, but at its heart, it, it just has that sort of you know, father, son, dyna family dynamic and about um, being an artist and being kind of proud of who you are and what you do. You know, I think there's uh, definitely those, those those themes as well. Absolutely. And so in this book, of course, there's amazing talent here. You illustrated this book as well and you designed this whole book. How long did it take you to design this entire book? And do you have a favorite scene in the book? <laughs> Let's see. Um, well, I mean, usually most of my illustrated, because I'm mostly an illustrator for books, uh, they usually take between six to eight months. Um, I, I'm, I'm trying to remember when I started the artwork, because first came the writing. Uh, so I started writing, of course, in May of 2019, as I mentioned. But I think I finished in 20, 20, April of 2021, uh, the final art, like, you know, Back, all the back and forth between the publishers and everything like that and all the updates and sketches and whatnot like the final final painting I think was April of 21 uh so it took some time but I I you know I really wanted to make sure this was you know just kind of my best foot forward and you know not that I I, I usually always try to do my best but it's just um this was a little more personal and special so I I think I kind of you know wanted to make sure I covered all the all the bases yeah. And is there a favorite scene that you got to illustrate? <laughs> <laughs> you know, there was there's a few scenes uh, in the book that I really like. I like the the part where we pick up Javier because that was a, definitely a morning routine where we always went to get Javier and Javier was a real uh, person and he, he worked for my father. And uh, I love that scene. I love the scene also where they're having the father and son are having lunch and they're talking about um um, why you feel proud of what you, about what you do, which is actually based on a real conversation I had with my dad. And then, um, and then the, the, the other really big scene or uh, scene that I like is actually close to the end pages. It's sort of like uh, where the author's uh, note, uh, note is, I think. Um, and it has a family. Yes, it has the family sitting down for 
you know, cause like at the end of the week, we sort of celebrate, we all come together and it's family and friends. And we all kind of, you know, after the, the, the week's long work, we, we come together and, and, and enjoy and, and have a lot of Mexican food and, and good cooking. So that was kind of nice. So good laughs and um, all that stuff. Yeah, that's such a beautiful picture. This is one that I would love to hang up here in my own, like, in my own room. It's so beautiful. Um, so you mentioned earlier, of course, that you said you've illustrated so many books. Have you always been interested in art? When did this kind of start? Or is it been like all year round? Like since you were little, you've always been drawing and creating. I, I yeah, I've always loved doing art, even before. Um, even before going to school, I was always drawing. And my father also was an amateur artist. And so he would tell us stories. And as he was uh, talking to us and telling stories, maybe he would tell us a story about uh, when he was young and he would kind of clean up this old, the kind of abandoned lot to play baseball on, you know, with him and his friends. He would draw it out. And, or there was stories about like um, his time in the army or, or there was other stories about he would talk about, you know, because he was a migrant farm worker working in California. And he would talk about Cesar Chavez and Dolores Huerta and the marches they would do. And so he would kind of sketch these little things out while he was telling these stories. So I think his storytelling uh, and his drawing really, you know, inspired me. Um, also, my mom, my mom loved books. We were always at the library and she would take us there to the, to the library as well as the museums and the art museums and natural history museum so there was a lot that i got from my both my parents you know that probably enhanced my uh direction to go into children's books for sure even though i might not have known it at the time like it just it really like looking back it's very obvious but like uh, you know but again yeah i've always been doing art and some kind of creative something creative yeah Nice. I'm so glad that they kind of cultivated that in a sense of exposing you to books and, you know, even the, they themselves drawing and everything. I know today you actually shared a post on your page with so many photographs and yeah. sketches. And I, I thought that was really neat. When you get inspiration just, you know, at a random place, is that what you normally do? Do you just sketch it anywhere you have something to write it down? Or how does that, how does inspiration work for you when you're on the go? Well, I mean, if it's just, if it's just kind of drawing, I'm, I'm, I have a sketchbook I usually take with me and I'm kind of like sketching either faces uh, or little landscapes or something like that. And then, you know, maybe I'll end up using them as characters in the book, like some, you know, certain faces kind of like, oh, this is a really, this is kind of captures what I, I really like. Um, it helps when there's a story also, like it kind of helps focus me, you know, so if I'm reading a manuscript or if it's my own story that I'm working on. Uh, that'll help focus me on what kind of art I will be drawing and working on. Uh, anytime I do a book project, I'm always looking at the research. I think that was part of the post a little bit today, uh, looking at research, um, reference materials, uh, using that to, you know, absolutely um, kind of um, direct or um, sort of guide me as far as when I'm working on the projects. So, yeah. And I think one super exciting project that I recently heard about was that your work is at Target and I thought that was so so cool I saw that the Target has like a special line with your artwork um when did you find out about this special project and is it only going to be available for this holiday season uh yes it's going to be available for this holiday season and uh so it's like a holiday christmas line um type of you know either you know holiday wrapping gift boxes uh little even ornaments and um some really wonderful things um and i found out about this last november i believe they contacted me uh if i would be interested of course yes i'm interested and um it was a really exciting uh, time, and um, but there was a huge deadline. I was like, "Oh, you got to finish by such and such." I was like, really, just you know, <laughs> knuckling down to work hard to finish everything. Um, I'm so glad I get to tell people about it now because I kind of kept it, you know, like uh, under wraps until just recently. And um, but uh, so it, technically, it's available online right now, and then in stores, I believe after. Halloween it's going to be in stores and it's really cool because it also has you know my name attached to all the items and it says like artist John Para so it's kind of that's kind of like a really cool 
like a uh, really cool thing to have there. And um, yeah, so it's, it's fun. I really enjoy it. <laughs> No, that's super, super cool. I, I like found myself looking at it. I was like, I might just be like buying gift bags for Christmas. Like people are just going to be receiving gift bags as the actual present. As the gifts. As you the can, gifts. Like, frame the actual gift bag as like a print too. I was like thinking of all these things I could do with all the artwork. Um, and it looks really, oh, I'm sorry. And it looks really great. I mean, it's like really like beautiful. The boxes, I love it. And it just really came out really nice. I just received a box uh, just couple days ago so it's exciting for sure oh, that is super exciting i'm gonna link it to this video too so <laughs> anyone who wants to check out the target line you will have access to that but john i know that you have artwork all behind you as well some of the things from other books do you have like an art store where others can like buy prints or anything like that well, I mean, I, I think I have um, like a, a, a store online with T-shirts and things like that through Tee Public and Redbubble. Uh, I used to do like art prints through my site, but it, it, it just became so much worse. <laughs> like it was taking away so much time. Like I, I needed to spend more time doing the actual art than, than being at the post office. So I had to kind of like farm that out a little bit, um, which is fun, you know, because sometimes, you know, uh, I've had people like, run into and they're wearing like so this is like a shirt from the the t public store and or yeah t public and um oh, or red bubble or something like that so yeah i'll definitely link it here is it still like an active store that i could oh yeah 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 for sure yeah both both places are are very active so um which is exciting and um yeah so that's kind of a fun thing um yeah I but I do, I do sometimes also get commissioned for original art and I do sometimes sell the original pieces um, just sometimes private emails come in and, and, and things like that, asking about either, you know, um, one of the original pieces or something like that. Oh, awesome. I'm definitely going to be linking the stores below. So if you see people out and about with, with your artwork, just know where it came from now. <laughs> I'll link it here. Well, John, I know this book is amazing. It came out this year. Are you currently working on more writing projects, illustration projects in the works right now? Oh, most definitely. Um, well, I just finished uh, or just about finished uh, the next book. Um, which is called Spanish is the language of my family. And it has to do with a little boy who enters a Spanish spelling bee. So uh, that's really cool. Cause I, I, I didn't know like how, like the whole background behind it. It was really interesting. And that's written by Michael Genhart and it's a fantastic story uh, that he wrote. So that'll be coming out uh, next year with Holiday House. And then uh, I have two more projects that are just getting warmed up and starting the works. And there's um, some other things I'm not quite at liberty to talk about yet, but um, they're fun, fun stuff. Yeah, they're coming in. It comes in all the time. So I just have to pace myself for sure. Yeah. And then from your side, are you working on writing another story yeah. from your own experience? Okay. So that's in the works. Yeah. So uh, crossing our fingers that we get to hear about that one upcoming and soon. When you have the pre-order links, let me know. I'll be happy to share those out as well. Um, I'm so happy that this book is out. I know I've said it so many times. It's just one that's super dear to my heart and that like touched my heart when I read it as well. Um, and I'm happy that there's even more projects coming out, you know, in the next year or so. So I'm excited for that. But before we head out, John, I want to play a quick little game with you called Get to Know the Author Illustrator for this version, where I'm just going to ask you a series of just fun fact, random questions. So just tell me the first answer that comes to mind so we can get to know you a little bit more. So are you ready to play? Yeah. All right, here's the first question. Do you prefer a quiet or a loud place to create? Quiet. Quiet. Next question, favorite snack? Uh, it's probably like a little bit of Arab, like bananas, nuts, you know, kind of like uh, stuff like that. Favorite color? Green. Um, favorite Mexican dish? <laughs> Oh uh, boy. Uh, well, I love the carne asada tacos for sure, but I also like, you know, eating fasole and uh, tamales, of course. And flan. Mm, for dessert. Oh, that yes. sounds so good. Have them all together. <laughs> <laughs> Just, it's hard to choose. Yes. What is your current favorite song? 
Uh, oh, well, there's this one I, I'm kind of listening to a lot. It's called he, uh, Heathens by 21 Pilots, but it's got like the, the Stranger Things um, like remix to it. So they have like the Stranger Things background to it. It sounds so awesome. It's a really good song. And just those two songs together. Just so, yeah. Perfect. Um, what is your favorite music to dance to? Uh, well, dance. I'm, I'm not much of a dancer, but if I was to dance, uh, like my wife, you know, if salsa's playing in, my, in the building room, my wife's passing by, maybe we'll cut a little bit of a rug there. Um, or 80s. I grew up in the 80s. So like, you know, um, that's fun, too. I love that music. 80s are salsa. Nice. Yeah. Um, what was the last concert you attended? Oh, boy. Uh, well, that was last week. Uh, I was in San Diego and I went to this heavy metal concert, Iron Maiden, uh, <laughs> with my brother, Matt. <laughs> so it was a lot of fun. We were right down in front and jumping around and uh, in the pit. So it was kind of exciting. <laughs> the things we don't see on Instagram. <laughs> I know. <laughs> um, next question. Um, what are some of your favorite children's books? Uh, some of my favorite, well, when I was very young, I definitely, a big influence for me was, uh, books by Virginia Lee Burton. Um, I really liked her artwork a lot. Something about it just really, um, you know, stayed with me all these years. Um, you know, whether it was the little house or the, the Mike McGillan, the steam shovel, um, or there was one about, um, this sort of the whole history of the world. It was, or the the planet or something forget my time or my life i can't quite remember the title but it was um it was really interesting i really like the artwork especially you know because as a young kid you know one of the first introductions to art is usually through children's books and because right. i <laughs> kind of connect to art so much you know it was just fascinating to me yeah nice and the very last two questions any hidden talents uh, well, I play guitar. You might see some some of the guitars, both electric yeah. and acoustic. And I used to play in bands uh, when I was growing up. Uh, I used to play in, and I grew up in California, Southern California, Los Angeles a little bit. So I used to play at the Roxy and the Whiskey Theater over there. And, you know, uh, had a lot of fun with that. Yeah. Do you still play? Like right now? I do. Yeah, I, I still play. <laughs> I'm not with anybody, you know, other than just my brother. My brother plays drums and piano. Oh, yeah. So, but uh, yeah, just... Um, just for fun oh that is super cool um okay and last question what is a book that you're currently reading or a book on your to be read pile uh well i'm reading two books right now one's called enlightenment now which is stephen pinker and uh the other book is uh which is kind of a heavy book it's like a lot of statistics so i kind of have to balance that out so I have this book about this one comedian wrote. His name is uh, Bill Bailey. I think I wrote it down. Let's see. Uh, yeah, Bill Bailey's Remarkable Guide to Happiness. <laughs> Just kind of a funny, he's a really, he's a British comedian, but he's also a very talented musician, um, piano, keyboardist uh, as well, but uh, very funny and very talented uh, gentleman. And uh, so he wrote this kind of fun, funny book. And I, I'm really enjoying both the books um, quite, quite a lot. Yeah, that's a good balance to have two that are not exactly like each other. So you can get a little break, go to the next yeah. and back. Yeah, I usually read two at a time, so it's, it helps. Perfect. All right. So, John, before we head out, where can readers purchase copies of your book? Um, well, I mean, obviously, you know, online, there's there's lots of places where you can order the books. Um, but in many bookstores, obviously, you know, nationwide or, you know, wherever they sell books, um, they definitely sell them. Um, so but I think you can even check or check online now where they're they're actually located. So but um, yeah. Yeah. And I will also want to remind readers, if you can't purchase, request it from your public library so others can have access to titles like these. This is a fabulous pick. So I will link this book with the ISBN. It makes it easier just to plug in on the library request. And so, yeah, definitely it's available anywhere where books are sold. And I will link. Um, do you have an author illustrator website as well? Yes. Okay. Yes. Uh, JohnParArt.com johnpartyart.com. Okay, so I will link that as well so you guys can check out all the rest of the books that John has also illustrated. So I will link that as well. Well, muchísimas gracias, John, for joining me today to chat a little bit more about this wonderful 2022 release and a lot of the personal connections that you had with this book. 
And then thank you everyone for joining in and celebrating Latina and Latinx Hispanic heritage this month and all year round. Thank you so much. Thank you.